Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Thank you very much for staying with us. It's now time for Off the Press, our segment where we take a look at the national dailies and make sense of it. In the studio with us is an economist, Mr. Golaho Olojede. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Nice morning. to be here. And joining us via Zoom is Ademola Akimbola. He's the publisher of the Podium Media, uh, joining us you know, from the US. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Oh. Nice to be here again. Okay. Thank you. I think right. there's uh, some delay uh, with the connection, but yes. anyway. Okay, let's uh, begin with uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. This one says, Matawali, ACF, clash over kidnap leaders' identities. Zamfara governor is saying, I'll reveal masterminds when schoolgirls reunite with parents. Treat Metawali as criminal if he fails to name those behind kidnapping, and that's the ACF. Bandits chained, beats abductees we met in camp, narrates freed schoolgirl. Patrol scarcity persists, transport fares rise by 100%. NLC mobilizes for protest over planned reclassification of minimum wage. EFCC deepens Tunumbu probe demands access declaration form from CCB. Saraki meets Obasanjo, says APC can't handle Nigeria's problems. And we see pictures here of uh, the coronavirus vaccine arriving at Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. Uh, that was yesterday at around noon. States gear up as Nigeria gets 3.94 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine. I was made to swear an oath by Oji Kalu's brother, and that's Abaribi. CBN finance farmers cultivated 3.64 million hectares, and that's according to the CBN governor. Suspected herdsmen kill women returning from stream in Ogun. Drama, as she arrests supporters, arrives caught in cultural apparel. Varsities, polytechnics behind mobilization of illegal graduates for NYC. Quara or your meets as brainst and brainstorm on joint security squad. Let's begin with you, Mr. Akimbola. Machawali and ACF are clashing over the identity of uh, you know the kidnappers. He mentioned yesterday in the news that people will be shocked when they find out who was behind the kidnapping of the schoolgirls, and we're hearing here he's saying. He would reveal that when they reunited the parents. We saw that they did yesterday. Uh, we spoke to some of the parents of the uh, freed girls, and uh, that's basically where we are at the moment. Mr. Akimbola, we know that Zamfara State Governor has been whining and dining with bandits, so to speak, because he receives them, say they're repentant, and uh, grants them amnesty. But uh, this kidnapping happened shortly afterwards. What are your comments on this, especially the fact that while the government is vowing to fish out yeah. these abductors, the state governor insists he actually knows who they are? Well, it's quite interesting to hear the governor speak the way he's been uh, doing since this saga started. Quite fair enough that he has been in the forefront in the rescue of these um, abducted students. But I think the information that he has, it's something he should be willing and eager to share with our proper security agencies. This information is not meant uh, for the newspapers. You can't be telling us you know the identity of the kidnappers. Meet with our proper security agencies, discuss with them to find a way of preventing a future occurrence. At this point, I wouldn't expect him to play to the gallery, keep saying you know the identities. If you know the identities, help government with the information so that this will be um, affected in the future. And more importantly, I, I, I just think that um, we can't completely throw away what he's saying. We all know that there's a syndicate uh, that has turned this into a cottage um, industry, so to speak. Um, it, 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 it's becoming a, a vicious cycle. You kidnap, you discuss, you get paid, you release, and it goes on and on. So interesting, we would like to know who exactly uh, are behind this kidnapping. It would be nice if Matawale would be willing to talk to security agencies. I think there's a way that government should 
are compelling to to I mean, to to share this information. It's not something uh, you say and you should, you should let go. So I I, I will be interested in hearing more from you. All right. Subsequent weeks. Okay, Mr. Olojide, let's bring you in here to get your comments on the headline and uh, the thoughts of Mr. Akimbola. Okay, um, we've heard this before, but it's not new. In the days of Jonathan, you had uh, uh, the late Azazi Owe told us that Boko Haram members are actually in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Nobody still told us who, who those people were, and we didn't know what happened about that, that, uh, that comment. Even in the current administration, we've heard things like, um, like, like uh, there is a cabal that have hijacked the presidency. Who is the cabal till today? We don't know. I'm not particularly looking forward that this man is going to come up with any names. I think these are all uh, part of the distractions, you know, when all these things happen. Uh, but if, if someone has been hobnobbing with bandits the way he has, then definitely he knows who these people are. And I think he had at some point also admitted that much. Gumi also said the same thing, that they know, that the governors know who the bandits are. The question is, why are we not moving in on this issue and closing it out? There is a, there is a, the, the complexity being introduced is that there are all sorts of complicity, from security agency to government to... When you begin to even question all the narrative about the kidnap, you find out that there are so many questions unanswered. How did you move 279 girls? You can't even drive one kilometer in some of those places without being stopped on the road. Did you bring high locks? How many high locks do you require to carry that number of girls? What is the distance between Kaduna and Zamfara for a military jet to take off and come to the rescue? So what exactly are we talking about here? Mm. It's a whole lot of mess. Let them clear it and, and, and show the way forward. So, I, so, so how, how embarrassing is this um, for the Nigerian government? Because it's, it's also not the first time that we've, we're dealing with the same questions and the same issues. Yes. So how embarrassing is it? And do you think the government will be able to own up to where they have failed with, with, with all of this? I, I, I don't think the government has seen it as embarrassing as maybe you and I as citizens. We are a laughing stock out there in the international community. A single American was kidnapped. And we saw what happened. American knew where he was. They went for him, they rescued the guy. We have had 300 people, we have had 279. We don't seem to be able to do anything. We keep begging and negotiating. And why, why didn't the, 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 uh, Trump ask for negotiation for his own, for his own people? No. Interesting We're just a bunch of jokers, that's, that's the reality. All right. Uh, Mr. Akimbala, I want to bring you in on this next headline uh, yes. on the front page of The Punch. Yesterday, the COVID-19 vaccine, 3.94 uh, 3 million doses arrived in Nigeria from Mumbai yesterday. And uh, Senate's you know, states are gearing up, you know, for the COVID-19 vaccination. But yesterday we saw news that yes. uh, the PTF has said only states that are prepared and have the storage facilities would receive this COVID-19 vaccines, and uh, the government has launched an e-registration portal for all Nigerians to go register to get the COVID-19 uh, vaccination. What are your thoughts on this, vis-a-vis -vis the amount of COVID-19 vaccine we have and the priority on uh, vaccinating healthcare workers? Yeah, first of all, we'll say, Uri, we're happy that at last the vaccines are here, but am I really, um, enthusiastic or optimistic about how well will we be able to handle logistics? No, no. I mean, um, the concern has always been: Do we have the storage capacity? I think we discussed this here some weeks ago. Do we have the storage capacity? Do we have the logistics efficiency? Okay, and are we going to be able to avoid? politicizing the um, vaccination process. I read yesterday the PTF has rolled out a four-phase approach towards this exercise. And I was just laughing. Okay, you 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 give to um, uh, healthcare workers, you give to doctors, you give to... Then they went there to say they will give to traditional rulers and so on. And I'm just like, almost 4 million vaccines for a country of 200 million people. Already it is. It, it, it is too insignificant, okay? Mm. And you are not going to come up with a distribution um, 
formula and you are also bringing hierarchy into it 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 it, it, it comes for concern but yes it's good that it's it has arrived and um, we continue to hope and pray that logistics aspect will be handled efficiently and effectively mm -hmm. to the point that it will make a difference in the statistics. All right. Okay. Um, so, Mr. yes, we're happy and to continue to credit them here. All right. Um, we're going to have to move on to another paper because uh, we're, we're running uh, out of time. Um, I hope that, you know, some the uh, EFCC probe of Balamit Tinubu comes up somewhere. You know, we can also quickly address that. But let's move to uh, the Nation newspapers this morning. Uh, the major one there says um, Buhari orders crack down on bandits, kidnappers, and others. Freed 279 times for girls, uh, they threatened to kill us and eat us. And once again, bandits kidnapped 50 in Niger State. Panic in Kwara overhead as relocation from Oyo to 13 villages. And also, COVID 19 vaccination begins in Abuja on Friday. CBN to phase out $40 billion OMO bills market. And um, also, Lado Jazz Group, uh, ZLP, joins APC in Oyo. Show array in court with strange bodyguard. Um, I'm going to start with, with Mr. Olojide here because we've already spoken on some of the other things. But um, I'm bringing you in with regards the bandits kidnapped 50 in Niger State. And the reason is we, is it the Niger world. Is or Nigeria, um, I'm guessing this is, um, well, it says Niger. Niger. Yeah. Uh, six killed in Kaduna Town. Suswam's brother murdered. Um, the, 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 the perspective of us and the whole country, you know, screaming and going, you know, um, crazy when 300 schoolgirls are kidnapped, 227, you know, doesn't matter, the number doesn't matter now. But when 50 Nigerians are kidnapped, shouldn't we be as concerned and as worried? Shouldn't the whole country be talking about 50 Nigerians, regardless of whether they're schoolgirls or they're market women? Uh, maybe because this is still very fresh, of course. Uh, the, the interesting thing is that a whole lot of kidnaps are unreported. It's been going on forever, from the insurgent in the, in the northeast to the, to the northwest. But you see, the school one is peculiar uh, because it affects students, young people, in a single location that, that I just packed away like that. <clears throat> the life of every Nigerian should be important. Mm -hmm. So whether you are a student or you are, wherever you are, nobody has the right to kidnap you and keep you without your consent. So the same way we make noise about uh, the student is the same way we should also talk about anybody that has been kidnapped. If, if you even observe, but unfortunately that is not what is going on. Do you know that some of the Chibo girls are still out there? So on Leah Sharibu's day, for example, I heard a lot of uh, <clears throat> thing about, oh, let's bring back Leah Sharibu. Yes, we owe it to that young lady and to, to, to posterity to bring her back. But nobody was even talking about the Chibok. And I'm asking myself, have we moved on? Can they still <clears> be found, <throat> even? Um, Mr. Kimbola, um, you can also quickly speak on that um, before we move to another paper. Yeah, like I said some, some minutes ago, it has become um, a vicious cycle. Uh, another 50 kidnapped who, who shout then, when they bring them back, who rejoice two weeks later, so it it um, it appears as if there's no end to this for now, and the president asking for a crackdown is just mere soundbite to me, because he said that before nothing has happened. He's given the new service tips mandate to do this to do that. Nothing is happening. So God for all, every man unto himself. We continue to pray for the best. <laughs> All right, um, yeah. we would quickly so, then move to um, the Guardian and see what we can find out. Last federal government takes delivery of COVID-19 vaccines. Also on the Guardian this morning, uh, journalists converge on Le uh, Lagos to unveil the making of the Guardian. Buhari declares Zamfara, no-fly zone, bans mining activities. It seems there's a new or fresh crisis brewing in Zamfara over uh, mining. Terrorists kill six in Kaduna, troops raid bandits' hideouts. And a lamentation in honor of Barrister Emmanuel Abiodun. Also, federal government invests 116.7 billion naira on second Niger Bridge project. Um, those are the big ones that we can find here. Um, and so we'll start with the second Niger Bridge. I think that's the only one we might be taking on the... Um, okay, and of course, the Zamfara no-fly zone. But let's start with the second Niger Bridge. Uh, it's a project that, of course, is still ongoing, I believe. 
Um, do you, uh, Mr. Kimbala, do you see that it will be completed anytime soon? And, you know, Nigerians can, of course, uh, celebrate that as one of the achievements of the current administration. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm very optimistic that finally work has progressed tremendously. Remember, this project was meant to have taken off under uh, the general administration. So much money was footed, but nothing was ever done. And um, both the president and um, the, 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 the works uh, minister, they've assured us that this will be completed before the end of the tenure of this current administration. So it's a very good thing that progress has been made, and we hope that they won't drop the ball the responsibility to focus on it. Okay. Second Niger Bridge is a very good project. Yeah. All right. And um, Sadeb um, Olujide, uh, you can also quickly speak on that. Uh, well, uh, it, it's been a campaign promise for several years. I, I think even in the OBJ days, Yaradua, everybody has touched on that particular project. It would just be nice to close it out once and for all. Um, I also don't understand the purpose of dropping the numbers now. What we want to see is deliver that project. Then you can tell us the number, how much you invested, and all of that. There, there should be no praise for half job for now. I, I, I wish that the next government would not have to make this a campaign promise. Again. Okay. Let's uh, turn to the Daily Independent. Still on this Jangebe abduction, uh, the abductees said, quote, our doctors wanted to rape us. So we're seeing stories here of the abductees, the freed schoolgirls, you know, recounting their experiences in the hands of the bandits. He, um, one of them said, um, they were saved by the leader of the bandits, which is quite, uh, I, I don't understand how that works out uh, for <laughs> you, but you know, they say they were saved by the leader of the bandits. Why did they abduct them in the first place? Anyway, bandits, uh, repentant bandits helped us release schoolgirls. As Zanfara governor speaking, some says some people wanted to frustrate release of schoolgirls and uh, FG declares Zanfara no-fly zone, ban mining activities. Labour is saying governors behind plots to move minimum wage to concurrent lists. And uh, Labour's here planning to embark on a nationwide protest on the 10th of March. Nigeria's alarming infant mortality irreversible without improved primary health care. So many other stories here. Uh, this one, the PTF assuring Nigerians that the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is safe. And uh, Osubi Airport owes aviation agencies billions of Naira. Uh, do we talk about this, this one, this labor story? I saw it uh, a few, few newspapers ago, especially the fact that they plan to, to, to strike now, to protest now, March 3rd, because of the move uh, to take it to uh, the concurrent, concurrent list, Mr. Olojedi. Well, uh, I don't think this is the right fight. Um, this is like Labour saying that the state should have no say in legislation regarding minimum wage. I don't think so. I think we can have it concurrent. At the federal level, determine what is the base. And then let each state be able to say, I will do base plus one. I will do base plus three. Because the cost of living in the state are not the same. And the capacity of the state to pay are not the same. It is a law, don't forget. So if labor, rather than all this, this route they are going, go and participate in the passage of that law, you know, be part of the contribution to that law. Tell them, the, the, the drafter, that I would like us to include this clause, that clause, that clause, to make it comfortable for us. But don't say that the states should not have a say in what they are going to pay. It's, it's an illusion. Okay, right. how about you, uh, Mr. Akimbala? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly my view. I, I, I don't think the labor leaders know what they want at this stage because the best thing that can happen to the minimum wage issue is for you to be moved to the concurrent list where states can have a say. You don't shave someone's head behind him or her. Okay, so we've always had it that the federal government fixes a particular rate and they say, say, look, we cannot pay. But more importantly, I would have expected labor leaders to also be thinking of civil service reforms. Most of these states spend over 70 to 80 percent of their revenue on paying salaries. Hence, they have no money left to spend on critical infrastructure. That is what labor leaders should be talking about. So many states are overburdened. So many states have excess, I mean, um, surplus to requirements. Those are the strategic issues labor leaders should be thinking of. Mm -hmm. How do we help the states to be able to pay? How do we reduce the workload? A lot of people in 
in, in, in most civil service, they're not doing anything. Well, just end it. Also, it's also, um, it's also, so I totally agree that the issue should be on the concurrent list. Yeah. Mr. Kimbola, I think, I, I guess it's also a great time to bring in the conversation on state governors and the ability to generate IGR. You cannot be a governor and complain that you don't yeah. have enough money to pay yeah. salaries or to create, or, you know, um, do critical infrastructure in your state when you've not in any way improved on the yeah. entirely generated revenue in eight years um, that you've been governor. So it's a great time to no, also bring it, that back. It, yes. Right. Even if they increase the IGR and they still end up spending so much on recurrent expenditure, which civil service salaries fall under, they won't have enough money to focus on capital expenditure, which is where development takes place. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, you know, I mean, Before we go. He, he had issues with civil servants because he was busy trying to develop infrastructure. He wasn't paying salaries. Okay, so be, be, if, before if we go, we bring that argument. I, back. I want um, before we go because we're we're out of time. But I want you to uh, both to quickly speak on. I'll start with you, Mr. Kimbola. The EFCC's case uh, against uh, Tinubu. Um, you know, uh, some people have you know dragged in politics into into that whole story. But where do you th see that going, and how how do you think um, how far do you think it will go? Well, I I, I thought we will have time to discuss the strategic realignment that is taking place in the southwest politics. Okay, Benga Daniel joining APC in Open, uh, Omishori in Oshun, and um, that other in your state. So while Tinubu is busy strengthening his own hold on the Southwest, people believe that the federal government is making a move to checkmate him. This same case was before the CCB in 2013, and the man was discharged for lack of evidence. So if I bring any back, that means you have fresh evidence uh, or there's something that we need to know. But you can't completely rule out politics from it. That's my view. All right, Mr. Lodge, quickly. Yes, I, I think there's a lot of politics going on. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, maybe the, you know, everybody if, as, that has done wrong should face the consequences of what's wrong. But when you have prosecuted someone once and you discharge the fellow and you're bringing him back because, are, you know, there have been rumors about presidential ambition, um, the court will not make a decision or should not make a decision based on the politics of 2023. And that is what we are all hoping for. So if he's guilty, let him pay the price. If it's not, then it has been a waste yes, of time. Yes, and the EFCC should bring forth their evidence, you know, proof, so that uh, their prosecution can indeed work out if they have a case. So thank you very much, Mr. Bolaho Oloje, the economist, and Mr. Adimola Kimbola, publisher of the Podium Media. We appreciate you coming on The Breakfast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank okay. you for having me. Okay. Have a great day. So yeah. let's now talk uh, today in history right after this break. Do stay with us.